I met a gypsy. So you almost have like a rock bottom moment and then you like give yourself up to the process because the way that you were doing it before you hit that rock bottom it like it obviously wasn't working then you have that moment and then Robbie talks to you and then you're just like all right dude whatever you tell me whatever I got to do and it's almost mm-hmm. like you just pulled your your own ego or whatever out of the way of that and you're like all right you tell me to jump how high exactly I mean that's literally exactly what happened because before that to a point like I'd been a team green kid for a long time as an amateur and I always just thought that you know like it was just gonna happen somehow you know without looking at it and being like I'm gonna go work harder than everybody I'm gonna bust my ass I'm gonna do whatever I gotta do I was just like yeah something will happen I mean it's got it right like it happened for everyone else why not me yeah. and I just had this kind of attitude you know like like a, just a shithead little kid you know thinking that why you know like it's gonna happen for sure like I'm too good not to and I obviously was not so um I realized that path wasn't Bogles. It wasn't canards. It wasn't dudes that were just so good and went and won everything because I'd never done that. And so, you know, whenever I did hit that rock bottom at Arena Cross, I was like, okay, it obviously ain't going to work the way I thought it was. Like, I'm going to have to go work harder than everybody. I'm going to have to go prove my point time after time again and get to a point where I feel like I can finally win. And the first step was that was getting through Arena Cross. And I was like, okay, how am I going to make money first in order to go pay to like get myself to the race? And that's when the Costa Rica opportunity came about. Uh, went and raced there all summer, made a you know a decent amount of money. That's the only thing that kind of kept me afloat that next year uh, on Crossland Honda. And um, but then I got that opportunity to go race Supercross. So I'm like, okay, this is it. You know, like I wanted to race Supercross. Like Arena Cross was one thing, and that was such an amazing uh, experience, and I needed that. But 2015, I was like, okay, rookie Supercross season. Now I can maybe go show my potential. I've worked my ass off. I I feel like I have a completely different outlook on life. Let's let's go see what we can do. And luckily enough, you know, I only raced four races, five races that year. Um, But it it drew maybe enough attention. I maybe did okay enough to do the cycle trader thing. And all I wanted was a cycle trader opportunity. I was like, I I know I'm not going to get a factory ride, but if I can get on this bike, I know I can Mm. do well. I was like, that's all I need. Just give me that opportunity. I'll go make it happen. And then I'll sign with star racing and go win a title. That's all I could think about that whole time. So um, that was the opportunity I needed for sure. So shout out to Christina and Chris Denny, man. That was uh, that was a that was a big breakthrough for me. Yeah, man, dude. I yeah, that that's such like a legit team too, man. Like you look at the guys mm-hmm. that that produced, you know, like you and Alex. Like there was some there was some really good dudes that that came out of that program. Yeah, I mean, even at the time too. It was one of those things where, you know, I tried the year before to get on it, but they were just like, nah, like, obviously we don't even know who you are, like, whatever. And so I did the crossing thing just because it was local, dude. Guy Cooper was the team manager, like an Oklahoma legend. And that's, that's the only reason why, yeah, yeah, I even got that opportunity is because I was local too. So um, that's kind of how that worked. And that's like literally Guy had to beg and for me to be on that team. And so I got that opportunity. But then going into 16, it was, uh, once again, it was Robbie Raynard was the biggest dude about that. Cause they were supposed to sign Jimmy Dakotas in uh, 16 mm-hmm. cycle trader was, and then that fell through at literally the last minute and he signed with Geico and it, that was a last minute thing too. And so for me, I'm just like, okay, like I have to get that ride. I was like, Robbie call whoever you got to call. I'll talk to anybody. I need that bike. And then once I knew the opportunity was there and he called and begged and pleaded and, you know, told Christina I could do it and just like, give him a shot, give him a shot. And then uh, finally they signed me at the end of November. And uh, luckily for me, there was a a Yamaha already there. I was riding Robbie's 450 at the time, but there was a Yamaha 250 that I just hopped on and started riding. And uh, yeah, I started riding at the end of November and came to California first of December and, you know, raced uh, race West Coast Supercross in January. So it was very last minute, but I didn't care. I was just like, I'll go make it happen. I don't give a shit how last minute it is. I need that bike. Give me that opportunity and we'll go, we'll go make the most of it. And uh, luckily I was able to do just that. So uh, that was a cool thing, weird kind of how it all got put together, but I'm just blessed that uh, it actually came together the way it did and I, I could show my potential. That's all I really needed, you know. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.